Hello to all of you and welcome to this ISH coffee series. The talk of today will be entirely dedicated to a very challenging and controversial topic, which is the relationship between coffee and cardiovascular disease and in particular hypertension. As you can see from the slides, how many times we have heard from our patients say, I've just stopped drinking coffee because I've discovered I have high blood pressure or because I have some kind of cardiovascular disease. And the same is true if you look at the newspapers or the magazines which are dealing with this topic that are clearly suggesting that drinking coffee can be very dangerous if you have hypertension or any kind of cardiovascular disease. Actually, the situation does not seem to be the same and we try to go through. First of all, we have to remember that coffee is not just a single compound, it's not just a single substance, it's a mixture of different biological compounds, all of them of, of botanical origin, and all of them have some specific biological effects. The most common, of course, is caffeine, which is responsible for most of the effect of caffeine, in particular for the mental performance. But beside caffeine, we have many other substances, and in particular, some antioxidant compounds, which seems to be pretty useful in terms of cardiovascular prevention and metabolic prevention. And the interaction between caffeine and the other additional compound of coffees are probably responsible for the overall effect of coffee in patients with cardiovascular disease. But basically, the question of today that I would like to discuss with you is, is coffee drinking dangerous in patients with hypertension? My name is Claudio Borghi. I'm professor of medicine at the University of Bologna, and I will I'll try to go through this uh, problem through three main sub, uh, uh, short sub questions. The first one is, is there any relationship between coffee consumption and the onset, new onset of hypertension? And the answer is probably not. If you look at the many data published in the literature, you would see there are some papers suggesting that drinking coffee can increase the probability of hypertension. But I think the most reliable and the most comprehensive is certainly the one I'm showing to you, where when an increase in one cuff per day, for every increase in one cuff per day, there is a progressive decrease in the probability in the hazard ratio of became hypertensive. So actually, we have no evidence for the many studies that there is any effect of coffee on the new onset of hypertension. This is, I think, pretty reassuring. The second question is, is there any effect of coffee on blood pressure control in patients with hypertension. Even in this area, there are many papers. Most of them have been conducted in a very heterogeneous population of patients reaching different results. But I think, again, the most interesting is a large meta-analysis carried out in a large population of patients with hypertension and showing that the drinking coffee is not associated with a huge, with a large increase in blood pressure. The average of increase, as you would see, is a, a little bit more than one millimeter of mercury for systolic and less than one millimeter for diastolic blood pressure. The real problem is caffeine, not coffee. If you look at the trial carried out with caffeine, you would see that the increase in, in blood pressure is much larger. So it means that the interaction between the coffee per se and the caffeine is probably involved in cardiovascular disease and in the blood pressure control. And the same is true if you are going to see the, in the same trial, the impact of coffee and caffeine in patients with blood pressure, uh, normal blood pressure and elevated blood pressure. And as you can see from the last line, which is referring to the patient with higher blood pressure values that reasonably includes the hypertensive population, actually the increase in systolic and diastolic blood pressure, which is reported by the meta-analysis is not absolutely significant. So it means that probably coffee drinking is not associated with the worsening of blood pressure control in the hypertensive population. The third and last question is that, is there any impact of coffee on overall and cardiovascular mortality in hypertension? And again, the answer seems to be no. 
Actually, we have many studies in this area, but probably the most important one has been published some years ago, taking into consideration over 200,000 patients followed up for 28 years. And you would see that increasing the consumption of coffee from one to five cup every day is associated with a significant decrease in the probability of death. And this is true for caffeinated and decaffeinated coffee. The only thing you don't have to do is smoking with coffee, because smoking is able to completely destroy the overall benefit of coffee consumption. And even if you look at the specific cause of death, that from our point of view is probably the most important, you would see that the drinking of coffee in the same trial is associated with an improvement in uh, mortality, with a reduction in mortality in terms of cardiovascular mortality, coronary artery disease, and stroke, which is exactly what we are looking for when we have to decide if our patient can drink coffee or not. So actually, I think that basically uh, we can, from this very short presentation, we can conclude that the effect of coffee are not so dangerous as expected, particularly in the hypertensive population when there is no increase in blood pressure, no risk of hypertension, and no impact on cardiovascular disease. So whenever our patient asks, I can drink coffee, we can certainly say, you can drink it. And if you like it, there is no problem. Here you can see some selected references. And if you want, you can go through more deeply into this topic. This is all on my side. I would like to thank you very much to, for participating in this very uh, important session of ISH coffee series.